Hey there, I'm Potch, and I'm a developer advocate at Mozilla. And I wanted to talk to you about a uh, new form of extensions for Firefox called Dynamic Themes. Uh, browsers have long supported theming. It lets you customize the appearance of the UI of the browser, change colors, apply a texture. Uh, they're really just kind of a fun way to customize and personalize things. Uh, Firefox now supports what are called Dynamic Themes, uh, and these allow a theme to actually react to changes in the browser and actually programmatically let an extension change aspects of the theme that's currently being applied. Uh, they're really neat. Uh, they're both, you can make fun things, you can make useful things, you could, you know, customize to the weather or your location or really anything. It's programmatic control of the browser's theme. So I want to show you a really simple uh, dynamic theme um, and sort of let people know what's possible and hopefully get people excited to uh, make more. So what we're looking at right now is actually a static theme. Um, and this is just called Quantum. It's sort of a Firefox theme, maybe one of our designers. Um, and you can see that if you click on it, it applies this nice color. And in fact, the text actually flips from a darker color to a lighter color to match. So all of these things are sort of basic customizations, and all of those things can be programmatically set in dynamic theme. I want to show you a simple dynamic theme that I've built, uh, just to show you what's possible and hopefully get people excited about making more of these. Uh, my theme responds to whether or not the currently selected tab is in reader mode. Uh, if you're not familiar with reader mode, it's available in a couple different browsers, and it actually takes the content of an article and formats it sort of attractively for standalone reading. So here's a normal hacks post. You can see all the text and images. And if we click this little icon here, the page, it's going to enter into reader mode. And now you can see the same content of that article sort of laid out, plain white background, very simple. You can customize how it looks, etc. I'm not really here to talk about reader mode, but I'm here to talk about a theme that detects reader mode. So uh, here is what reader mode looks like. Uh, and you can see the UI of the browser is unchanged. And then we install my reader mode theme. And so I'm currently in the about debugging view, which lets me load temporarily an extension. Uh, I have the reader theme extension that I've built. And now if we switch back to that tab, you'll see that the browser now sort of displays the open pages of a book. And uh, the current tab is a light font color and the rest sort of fade into the background. Uh, not necessarily something you might want, but it's sort of a neat effect. And I'd like to show you uh, how that works now. So let's get the code pulled up. So first, every extension starts with a manifest. This tells the browser what the extension is going to do and what sorts of permissions it needs. Uh, for us, we need to uh, understand whether a tab is in reader mode and we need to be able to change the theme. So we've requested the theme permission and the tabs permission. Uh, tabs will let us listen to changes to the current tab or active tab. Um, and theme lets us modify the theming aspects of the browser. Additionally, we're going to need a script that lets us uh, actually monitor these things and listen for events. So I've registered a background script here. Let me show you what that script looks like. Uh, it's actually not a terribly large amount of code. I think it's about, yeah, 40 lines of well-formatted code. Um, we're going to start with defining what sort of theme we want to apply. Obviously, I've defined this as one big JS object, but you could just as easily compute this stuff dynamically. So you can see we're applying some images, uh, we are adjusting them, and we are applying some colors. Uh, first, you'll see this header URL here. Uh, all themes currently require a header URL, um, but a header URL is normally the standard theme graphic, and that usually uh, docks to the top right corner of the uh, browser's UI. However, uh, I wanted my image to be centered, so you can see I have this little thing here. It says bg.svg. And if we take a look at that, <laughs> it's actually a, just a blank image, just a blank SVG image, nice and compact. Um, and the browser is going to use that and just draw transparency uh, into the browser's UI. Unfortunately, these are still required for backward compatibility reasons. Um, but we can also apply other images. So you can see this theme also has additional backgrounds uh, and only one of them, which is the book. So here's the image of the book. You can see it's sort of a cropped image of an open book with its pages splayed out. And you can see it's mostly light, a little bit of dark, but a uh, mostly light background, which means we're gonna probably need some way to set some text against it. And as you can see, we did. Uh, we have a background color, which is, let's say the browser gets really wide and we run out of image, we'll actually show this background color, which in this case is sort of a darker brown. Uh, a tab text color. Uh, I'm actually going to have the text of the current tab 
be white, um, and all of the other text of uh, the other tabs is going to be black. Um, so you can see it's actually kind of going for a high contrast look here, um, and uh, a toolbar. So if you go back to the theme when it's applied, you can see that the current tab and the toolbar is actually sort of a semi-transparent black that's overlaid on it just to add some extra contrast. Uh, and that's what you're seeing here with the uh, text color and toolbar color. And you can see it's a semi-transparent black. Uh, additionally, we have these properties, uh, kind of CSS-ish. Uh, the additional backgrounds actually allow the customization of uh, repeat patterns um, and image alignment. Like I said, the required image stocks to the top right, but you can see here, uh, we're actually aligning our first uh, image here, which is the only one, uh, straight to the top. And this means it's gonna be centered and the top of the image is gonna match the top of the browser's UI. And I've said, like I said, I want when the window gets wide, I don't want the book to repeat. I just want that background color to show through. So I've set it to no repeat. Okay, so we have a theme. How do we apply it? Well, first we need to see if we are in reader mode or if we've changed to reader mode. And you can see we've actually set up a couple event listeners right here. Uh, tabs on unactivated is an event that fires when any time the active tab changes. And it returns an event object, one of which the properties is which tab it is. Uh, additionally, if a tab changes state, but not necessarily changes uh, activation state, uh, you get the unupdated event. And this lets us listen for if the current tab uh, is entering or leaving rear mode. So you can see in either case, we are grabbing the ID of the tab and passing it to this function update. So what does update do? It's really easy. Uh, I'm getting the uh, information about all the tab from the tab's ID. If it's not the currently active tab, I'm not interested because I'm only want to change the theme when the active tab is in or not in reader mode. Um, and then we just check the tabs in reader mode. We're going to update the current window with our constantly applied theme, our statically computed theme up top. And uh, if we're not, we're just going to reset. So it's really, really simple. Uh, we're looking for changes in the current tab. Um, if the current tab enters or leaves reader mode, we want to react to that, and we're gonna apply that to the currently selected window. So let's go back and take a look at that one more time. You can see uh, this dynamic theme is currently on. If I leave reader mode, the theme goes away. Now we're back to the default Firefox theme. Uh, if I enter reader mode and switch to another tab, you can also see that the theme goes away. It really only applies to the current tab when we're in reader mode. Hopefully uh, that gives you an idea of what's possible with uh, dynamic themes. Obviously we could have lots of different themes up here. We could have some of these properties be computed dynamically. Maybe we extract you know, the background color of the current web page, or maybe we figure out you know, some colors from the fav icon. There's all kinds of things you can do. Um, I just want to give you a taste of what's possible. Hopefully we uh, see lots of people making really cool dynamic themes in the future. Thanks.